Once we have classified our 16 as sequences to taxonomic units, we can proceed to counting species per sample. So later on we are going to do statistical analysis and visualization, and for that we need essentially two things. So we need a table which lists the frequency of the different taxa in each sample, and also a file which allows us to describe the experiment. So we need to assign the samples to experimental groups, and if we had other experimental factors in our experiment, we also need to describe those. The chips to tool count species per sample is based on an R script, but we are also planning to integrate Motor's OTU-based approach, which consists of these uh, Motor tools, later. So as input, you need to give the sequences taxonomy assignment file from the previous step and the count table. And essentially, as output tables, you get these two things. Now, confusingly, uh, this table is also called count table. But so here, our, our rows are samples and the columns are taxa. Now, depending on your parameter settings, you will also get the same thing, but transposed, so that rows are taxa and columns are samples. I will talk about that a bit later. And then the FINO data file is the one that allows you to, to essentially describe your experiment to Chipster. So let's have a look at the parameters of this tool. So first of all, you need to specify what is the cutting level for taxonomic names. Uh, by default, it's zero, which means that you actually keep the full names, but you might want to set that to another number. Then you need to decide if you want to rarefy the counts. Uh, the default here is no. So what does this mean? Well, as we have seen already, the samples have different number of sequences. So here you need to decide, should the count table be subsampled so that each sample in the end has the same number of sequences as the smallest sample? So do you want to rarefy the counts, in other words? Now, there are different opinions about that. Um, according to some people, rarefying is not optimal for microbiome data. And there are other methods for normalization, so making the samples comparable. Uh, and one that has been uh, proposed is actually comes from a uh, Bioconductor package DSEQ2, which was originally made for RNA seq data, but this method can be used also here. If you want to read more about it, uh, this is a particularly good article. So, in Chipster, if you leave this rarefy counts parameter to no, the rarefaction is not going to happen. And you will actually get two count tables. So uh, the normal one and also the transposed one, which you can then use for DSIG 2 based tools in Shipster. If you set rarefy counts to yes, then you will not get this transposed count table because it would not be correct anymore to use it uh, for DSIG 2 based tools. Uh, you can also select if you want to produce a binary table instead of a count table. So, and the default is now here. So, binary table means that if if a certain species is detected, uh, the table says one, and if it's not detected, the table says zero. So, this kind of binary table is typically used uh, when studying co-occurrence of species. So this is what the parameter panel looks like. Um, so here you have the rarefaction parameter. Perhaps one thing to note is that uh, for those species where the counts after rarefying would be zero, uh, they're actually removed. So you are losing information if you set this parameter to yes.
So then the resulting count table file looks like this. So here you have the samples and here you have the species and then the counts for each species in each sample. And the transpose table has exactly the same content. It has been just um, tilted so that now you have the samples as columns. Then the FINO data file is a, is a very special file in Chipster because it's used for describing the experiment. So you will have these columns there ready, but, but these two will be empty. And particularly important is the group column. So here you need to describe which samples belong to the control group and which were the, for example, the treatment group. And rather than writing control and treatment here, uh, we strongly encourage you to use numbers and use numbers in such a way that the smaller number is always for the control group. This is because the R-based tools after this are going to look at it and for them it's easier to understand numbers. If you have text, it's going to take the text in alphabetical order, which can then cause problems later on. Now you can obviously have more groups than just two, so then you just add more numbers and assign your samples to those groups. If you have more experimental factors, so not just one thing, but several, for example, time, cost, or whatever, then you can add new columns. So you give a name uh, to the new column, and then you, again, using numbers, uh, describe the thing for that additional experimental factor. The description column has a, a special function. So the text here is used for sample names in visualizations. So you can control what is shown in visualizations by writing the names here. 